Hello everyone, in this video I will go over my solution for the problem name Minimize Permutation Subarrays taken from today's Code Forces round. This is an excellent problem which will teach you casework plus basic combinatorics in order to find the cost for each case. So in this problem we are basically given a permutation of size n and we want to minimize the number of permutations of which are in a subarray. So the number of subarrays which are permutations is the quantity which we want to minimize. In order to do so, we can swap any two elements exactly once. So for example, if we have this permutation and we swap elements 2 and 3, then we have the permutation 5, 4, 1, 2, 3. And in this permutation, uh, the, the number of subarrays which are permutations are 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there are four permutations, four, four subarrays which are permutations. But instead, if you don't do anything, then then there are uh, basically one, uh, two, and uh, three permut three subarrays which are permutations. So the optimal solution is to not do anything, which is basically swap an element with itself. And swapping an element with itself will not change the array, and it will minimize the number of permutations in this case. So we want to find out which two indices to be swapped in order to minimize the number of subarrays which are permutations. And um, let's take an example. Let's say that we have one, two, three, and we want to make sure that there are the least number of subarrays which are permutations in this sequence of elements. So it's clear that initially there are three subarrays, but we want we can make it smaller. So we can swap elements. Let's say we swap elements one and two. Then, then this will give us exactly one, two, and one, two, three. So this will give us two subarrays, which are permutations. If you swap elements uh, one and three, you get three, two, one, uh, which will again give you, uh, which will actually be, so, so, so there's a mistake, sorry, over here. The, the element 1, the element 1, 2, and the element 1, 2, 3 all form permutations. And even in this case, 1, 1, 2, and 1, 2, 3 all form permutations. And whenever 1 and 2, so a key observation which we realized from the first example itself is that if 1 and 2 are adjacent, then, then you have another subarray which is a permutation. So 1 and 2 should not be adjacent or they should be as far away from each other as possible and uh, this is actually the only observation required for this entire problem the rest of it is uh, casework so so this key observation in which you notice that one and two should be away from each other uh, and, and you can do that by just swapping elements two and three so if you swap elements two and three you get one and two away from each other and you get that there are only two permutations which are subarrays. Uh, th this observation follows from the fact that a permutation should contain elements one, it should contain element two, it should contain element three all the way up till element i. So a permutation one to i, a permutation of length i should contain one to i. And, and that's why, uh, therefore, if uh, 1 and 2 are away from each other, this means that uh, both 1 and 2 are not part of the permutation, are not part of the permutation at the same time. And that's why it's, it's not a permutation. O only when only when you include the entire range uh, of elements of indices from 1 to 2, only, only when you include both those in indexes, then you will get 1 and 2 being part of the same permutation. And, and that's why basically uh, the entire problem reduces to four cases. Uh, and those, those correspond to cases in which you try to move elements 1 and 2 to either the beginning or the end of the array. So, so there are four cases to consider. Case one, you move one to the beginning of the array so that it is as far away from 
do as possible. Case two, you move one to the end of the array. Again, to make it as far away from two as possible. Case three is you move two to the beginning. And case four is you move two to the end. So these are the four cases in which you try to make one and two as far away from each other as possible. Uh, using the observation that when they are far away, the number of permutations are minimized. In case one, when you move one to the beginning, you compute what is the cost. So let's say that's C1. Let's say case two is C2. Let's say case three is C3. And let's say case C4 is C4, where uh, CI is equal to number of permutations, number of subarrays that are permutations in case I. And you basically check for each case the number of subarrays which are permutations and you take min ci is the answer so this is this is the answer which you uh, basically print you print you print which ci has the minimum number of subarrays which are permutations and um, this is the basic idea behind the entire solution so so if, if you look if you run this uh, algorithm on the other examples as well you'll notice that it's always optimal to swap one to make it the beginning or in this case it's optimal to swap two to make it the end because one is already in the beginning so if you swap two and four you'll get the optimal solution and uh, even, even if the output is a different output in the sample you can you can print your own solution because there are multiple solutions and our algorithm will actually print swap three and five because those are the two indices the, the last index with the element uh, where with the index where two is present you swap those two indices and uh, you can see that one and two are as far away from each other as possible and the number of subarrays which are permutations will, will, will be just the entire sequence from one to five so there's just one subarray which is a permutation and that's why the 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 number of subarrays which are permutations is minimized the cost is minimized and now obviously the uh, the problem arises how to compute CI efficiently. So far, we have been able to reduce the problem to four cases. Uh, we know that there are just four possible swap operations which you can perform. You can either swap one and one and uh, one. So, so you can swap uh, position position at which one occurs with one, or you can swap position at which one occurs with n, uh, or you can swap you can swap the position at which two occurs with one or you can swap the position at which two occurs with n so these are the four options which are there and for each of these swap operations you compute the cost so now i'll show you how to compute the cost for for each 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 case wise operation so in case one when you swap one with the first element in the array you you will get something like this you'll get one then you'll get p of two p of three p of four all the way up to P of n minus one and p of n and you want to find out how many subarrays are permutations so a simple algorithm for finding the number of subarrays which are permutations in this case is to just check if or uh, if the element which you have found so far uh, so let's say so you can just maintain a set of all the elements so far and uh, the the moment so so you can maintain a clever way to do this, which I do in the code, uh, and it simplifies the code a lot, is to maintain the maximum element so far. So, so you want to check check if one to i form a permutation, if if one to i form a permutation. In order to do that, you simply check whether or uh, whether uh, the maximum element so far is equal to i. So, so you so you start off with one. It's a permutation, so you add plus one to the answer. So, so cost one will increase by one. Then you go to two, you check P2. What is the maximum element so far? If P2 is equal to two, then the maximum element is two, which is why you increase the cost by one, because two is equal to two. However, if P3 is something like three, P, if P2 is something like three, then the maximum element will become three, and that will not, uh, that, that will not be equal to two, so you, so you don't increase the answer by one. However, if, if you go to some random element, let's say n, and you notice that the maximum uh, in, in the entire array is n, then, then it's clear that max is equal to n. That's why you increase the cost by one. And uh, in general, this algorithm will work to check whether 
the whether these whether this summary forms a permutation uh, from from one till pi or uh, notice that other summaries from from let's say p3 to pi or from p2 to pi won't form permutations because they don't contain the number one so you only need to start at one and keep incrementing the cost from one uh, similarly in case two when you move one to the end of the array so you have something like uh, some some element over here then you have p2 p3 p4 all the way up to pn minus one uh, and then you have one so in this case you want to check if one to pi form a permutation uh, in which you go backwards because you want to start at one and check if one to pi form a permutation uh, and you do the exact same process of checking if the maximum element so far uh, is equal to i uh, over here there's a small change which will happen you want to you since you're starting at one you, you're starting at the nth position and you're going backwards uh, it will actually be so this will be position n this will be position n minus one this will be position n minus two and in general the ith position will be n minus i plus one so you want to check whether the maximum is equal to n minus i plus one and uh, that's the condition in 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 this example uh, in, in this second case so if the maximum element when you go backwards is equal to n minus i plus one then you increase c2 plus c2 plus plus so that's the cost in case two for case three uh you 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 place two in the beginning and then you have some random elements and then you have uh, yeah some random elements and one comes somewhere along the way so if you want to check if two till pi form a permutation you need to not only check whether whether the maximum element so far so you want to check whether the maximum element so far is equal to i but you want to also check whether one appears so you use a boolean variable found one to represent whether one is there so far in the array and uh, if if one appears in in the array you put found one to be true otherwise you said otherwise found one remains false and and the moment you find one in in the permutation so far and you have max max c is equal to i then you know that one you know you know that the elements from two till pi form a permutation and that's why you increase the cost in case three by one and uh, similarly in case four you do the exact same thing uh, except you just check whether max c is equal to n minus i plus one and found one is true so notice that case one and case three are the same and case two and case four are the same except for the fact that you also need to check for found one because you need to ensure that one is part of the permutation and um, in general you can just quote these four cases and take the minimum of these four costs and print that and uh, th those are the only four possible swap operations which minimize the number of subarrays which are permutations and that's why uh, this simple algorithm of checking four cases works so now i'll show you the code which implements the same idea so in the code for each test case i take in the value of pi and i maintain pause of i denotes the position at which element number i appears and you maintain four costs for denoting the cost uh, in each of the four cases in which you move one to position one or one to n or two to one or two to n and you just uh, perform the swap operation so you swap swap one with swap so, so you swap element one with the number at position one and then you compute the cost and then you swap back and then you swap element one with the number that appears at position n and you compute the cost and then you swap back and then you check you swap element two with the number at position one you compute the cost with this found one or uh, boolean variable to check whether one appears in the element or not and if one appears and and max is equal to i then you know that this is a permutation and that's why you increase cost by one and after you do that you swap back and finally in the end you uh, swap element two 
with the number at position n and you swap back after computing the cost uh, actually there's no need to swap back so no need to swap back or uh, since we are not checking for any other swap operations these are the only four swap operations which can minimize the number of permutations and you take the minimum of those four and just print print the corresponding uh, swap operation uh, which you need for, for for the minimum cost and you can verify that this code gets accepted so i hope you like this problem and my solution if you have any doubts in any part of the solution do leave them in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you